Okay. Okay. I just wanted to double check that with you. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So anyhow, welcome everybody. Uh, this is a short presentation. It's not really very long and that is by design because I want to leave as much time as possible at the end. Uh, the value of attending such a presentation is for you to learn, to learn new things. And sitting passive and just listening to somebody talk is not as good as if you participate. You have to have skin in the game. You have to ask questions. Um, I may not have all the answers. Uh, luckily, I have here my buddies, uh, Ken and Marty. I have a uh, non-written agreement with them that... Uh, difficult questions I pass on to them. So here's a question I can answer, but difficult question I will refer to them. So that, that's our non-written agreement. Anyhow, so let's move on. I know that more and more people will join us as um, time goes on. I put this presentation together because after many, many, many presentations, actually just about 500 presentations that I've done in the last 15 years, I reached a point that I'm not excited anymore to talk about common subjects. I want something different. And this was a topic uh, that caught my eye. And I said, oh, this is something interesting. People need to know about this because this is coming. It's not going to go away and people need to know about it and get ready for it. So, and I think as time goes on, you'll get used to my sense of humor. I decided to name this, the bot is ready to interview you now. So let's go on. Okay, so the hiring process is evolving. Again, you know, today we do differently than five years ago, than 10 years ago, and definitely different than way before that. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the hiring process. Uh, things are moving faster, people and companies need results fast because too many things are changing. Since the advent of pandemic, video, I stress the word video, video interviews are have increased 76%. When I read about this, I said, wow, 76%, that's more than three quarters. So let's understand why this is happening. And I also found out through my reading that in a recent poll, 55%, that's more than half, of people said they've never heard of interviews with the machine. So this topic needs to be put on the table and, it, and need, needs to be discussed. One third of Fortune 500 companies are using AVI, and AVI stands for Asynchronous Video Interviews. Um, one third, and it's becoming more and more and more, and learning more about this, reading about this, I found out that Walmart is using 15,000 daily. And I said, wait a second, that, that cannot happen. Uh, this is probably a mistake. But actually, uh, I looked up and I found out interesting things about Walmart. I knew that Walmart is a big company, but I didn't know how big. Walmart is the largest private employer in the world. Walmart uh, employs 2.2 million people around the globe. In America, they go by the name of Walmart. Uh, they are represented in 24 other countries and their revenue is almost fi $548 billion. That's a very, very big number. So anyhow, I calculated that 15,000, which by itself is a huge number, this is about half a percent of their employees. So that, that makes a lot of sense. In central New Jersey, where I live, Johnson Johnson started using it. And I found this out from a person, one of my clients, uh, and she was a kind of mid to high level management position. One of the questions that occasionally comes up, 
if you are a really high level executive, do you have to go through this process? And frankly, I don't know, but this individual was fairly, fairly high level management and she was asked to go through the process. So lots of job applicants with pent up demand to fill opening. There is a lot happening out. There is a lot happening out. Companies, we discussed this a little earlier, companies are struggling to find the right people for them to stay in business. Um, I did a little travel, travel during pandemic and not only in my area, but in other areas that uh, my wife and I visited, we found out that about one third of the stores on the main artery, on the main street are closed. I have not seen anything like this before. So that's sad. And of course, Plato said that necessity is a matter of invention. We knew that. I just wanted to put it here. So automation was needed for screening out applicants. Why? Too many applicants. It's, it is so easy to apply. It's so easy to apply. And people do. People want change. People need a job, so they apply. Companies cannot absorb all those applicants, and they have to put in some sort of a filter to, to screen them out. So AV, AVI became the solution to this. Um, I'll talk about it in detail in a minute. And I don't need to remind you guys, but it takes many, many steps to lead to an offer or a rejections. Uh, perhaps this is too small on your screen to see. But again, there are many, many steps before something is happening. And here is, here is a process that happens today in companies. Once you pass successfully to the employer's applicant tracking system, uh, the ATS, you'll receive an email invitation to interview with a bot. You apply, many people apply, instantly you get a response that says, welcome, thank you, here is a process, what you need to do, you need to interview on the screen, they give you instructions, I'll give you a little more details. Now, the completed videos recording are reviewed by a team and ranked. As you can see here, I don't know too much about it. I found this on the internet. So there is an individual, John Peterson, and he received four stars by the team. Now, let me remind you, you know this, that uh, recruiters get your resumes and they spend, based on an article, six to 10 seconds making a decision whether they want to interview you or not. Uh, you'll interview on your screen with a robot, and uh, how many seconds do you think the team is going to spend deciding whether they like you or not? Probably not more than six or 10 seconds, I don't know. But as we see here on this slide, uh, this gentleman, John Peterson received four stars. And I suspect those that, I think my next slide says this, uh, you know, in a minute, I'll get back to you. Industry leader, higher view, ranks responses based on data collected from current applicants, okay? And I don't have a magnifying glass to see what, how they rank it, but this is what I learned. Again, the industry leader is higher view and they collect all kinds of data and they rank you. The next step, the interview lasts from 20 minutes to an hour. And I'll give you more details later because for me to make this presentation, I went through this because I wanted to know more in detail about what I'm going to present. The candidate is given one to three minutes to prepare a response with a chance to redo it. So essentially, there is a human on your screen 
and looks at you and says, hi, tell me about yourself. And then you have one to three minutes to gather your thoughts, prepare for the answer. And after the time you have to push a button and the recording goes on and, sorry, and you, you get uh, perhaps two minutes or three minutes, the company decides how long your answer has to be. And after, let's say if it's three minutes, after three minutes, they cut you off. And the same person comes back again and is asking you the second question. And this is, this is how it goes. The highest ranked candidate, candidates are invited for a live video interview. Again, if you pass the interview with a robot, then, and if you're ranked high enough, only then you're invited for the in-person video interview. So these are the steps. Companies benefit from this, of course, that's the reason they did it, but applicants face another huge hurdle. And I'm going to talk about it. As you can see here in this picture, I don't know how big the picture is on your screen, but you are evaluated on your, by the AVI, by uh, AI also, uh, artificial intelligence, you, by your facial expression, your sentiments, and the keywords that you're using. I, I have more details about this. So here are the company's benefits. It's very convenient for them because it's an easy process. It's not one person decision, but a team reviews it and the team makes a decision and they are aided by artificial intelligence. And that can create a problem. We, I'm sure we will talk about this in a minute. The AVI simplifies scheduling. It saves time. It eliminates administrative tasks and it standardizes the process. So clearly the company puts a lot of money into the system because it makes their life much, much easier. Let's see what are the hurdles for the applicants. First of all, lack of familiarity. You remember I said 55% of people have no idea what this is all about. And there is no icebreaker. You know, when you go for an interview, there is one or two sentences, you know, would you care for coffee? Can I get you water? How was your ride to our office? Something like an icebreaker. There's no icebreaker here. Uh, it's a one-way communication, which for us humans is very, very odd. We are not used to talk to camera. You really need to be trained for that. Um, and it's a one-way communication with no chance to ask questions. Sometimes you like feedback. You want to ask questions. You want the dialogue. There's no dialogue here. And you cannot build the rapport with the interviewer. It's just a person on your screen talking to you. Okay, so here is my first stop. I have another one at the end. But I give you a lot of food for thought. I would like to hear from you comments. What do you think? Have you had such an experience? Don't be shy. I mean, we have another out. 40, we had another 45 minutes so we can just look at each other. I, I enjoy it. I see oh, all I'm my friends. Say, I actually, I actually did, did do one a while ago. And it was a little bit unnerving, but I had practiced before um, on the screen um, to try to anticipate. But for me, the hardest part, honestly, was smiling. Um, I was all set with my, my words. And I'm like, I forgot to smile. I'm like, I got to be happy about this. I mean, uh, why would you want to work with a Debbie Downer? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyone else had any experiences? Alex, it's know. Joey Himmelfarb. I also, I also had an experience like, just like Ken described. It was very unnerving. It was, it was the first time I'd ever done it. Uh, it was weird talking to nobody. And it was weird not getting instantaneous feedback on the things I was saying, on the gestures I was making. So um, it was unnerving. And I, and I didn't get the job, but it was certainly uncomfortable. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but it certainly was uncomfortable. Oh, I see some questions in the chat now. How do we help people to best prepare? Uh, is Zoom the best way to practice? 
I will. Typically, I say when I make such presentation, typically I say you're not allowed to jump ahead with my slide. I will talk about it. Okay, okay. Um, Alex, go ahead. Hi, it's Juliet. I had this type of interview too. I prepared ahead of time. There was at least two websites where you could prepare for interviewing with a bot. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was extremely uncomfortable. It felt like I would, it felt so strange and I didn't get an opportunity to interview in person. I, I don't think I did well at all, but I did practice for it per the recommendations that the uh, company suggested. Yeah, uh, Julia, thanks for your comments and thanks for joining us. Uh, Joy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, indeed, this is, you see, this is behavior modification. You need to change your behavior because these are the rules of the game. We are not used to talk to a camera. I mean, people that we see on our television, uh, these are people that read the evening news and they have training and they are innately very good at it. Normal people are not very good interacting and interviewing, especially, this is very important. This interview is very important and we're not used to do it. But I'm going to talk about what you can do to become better. Before, first, Deb also said it feels like a lot of prep is required to make it past this. Um, how would, how, what type of, would it be as much prep as a preparing for an in-person interview or a phone or a phone screen with a person, do you think? There is a lot of similarity. There is a lot of similarity. Uh, but some is different. Pre preparing for an interview, and I'm going to give you lots of details in a minute. Okay. You need to prepare for an interview. Look, uh, you're not genius, you're not Einstein, and even they, and you know, let, let me give you a very good example. Those of you that went to college and to school, whatever, when you had a test, when you had an exam, did you prepare or you just walked in and took the exam? Of course you prepared for it. The interview is like a test. You need to prepare for it. And I will guide you to that in a minute. Great. Great. Hi, um, hi, my name is Susan. I actually have experience uh, interview in the web camera. I actually did well. Uh, the only part I didn't do well is at the end. The end of part of the question was a strange question. And they uh, turned to me the other side of the screen and go back to my screen. I got so confused about this. <laughs> I did everything. It's just, but they got back to me. They like really want to interview me in the live, in the camera or the, the, the recruiter. It's just, I messed up two, two parts. What, what advice can you give me? <laughs> yeah, but Susan, this was an interview with the human, right? Not, not with the no, computer. No, it's not a Zoom, it's the camera. It was like automatic, it was like a camera right there. So I did well. I just thought after the camera, when it went on the minute, I passed, a minute the question finished, and then turn around, go back to the previous question. And I was like, I have to repeat myself again. So I was like, wait a minute, I didn't say that, but I like phrased it in other words, and then, then we could have got back to me. Sorry, they made a mistake. You know, <laughs> I'd like to have you come alive into you. Yeah, these are glitches again. Okay, shall I move on? Sure. Okay. Okay, so how does artificial intelligence influence the hiring decision? That's a big, big question. I don't have all the answers, but we can talk a little bit about it. In the 1990s, Monster.com offered employers digital job listings at a lower rate than newspaper classify ads. So that changed the whole picture. The avalanche of applications led to applicant tracking system. And I'm sure all of you have heard about the ATS. Yeah. You apply, 
then there is a software called ATS. It evaluates uh, the keyword that you are using. Uh, if there is a match between the keyword they want Beautiful. and you are using, That's the, then they are taking you to the next step. And hopefully at one point, you, you'll get an interview. So that, that's an applicant tracking system. Now, AVI technology vendors built predictive, predictive tools for scoring and ranking applicants. Predictive tools, that's a very, very big word. Uh, they are taking a lot of data points and they are making prediction how you will perform in the future. They are like Google's search engine or Netflix personalized movie suggestion. You know, when you look at a movie on Netflix, next time you get on Netflix, and if you were to look, if you were looking at dramas, then probably they will feature drama movies uh, for the next time. And so is Google. So they are trying to make a prediction based on the information that they have. The AVI measures performance by analyzing the verbal responses, tone and facial expression. These are some dimensions we did not even think about. I will share my personal experience in a minute. Artificial intelligence provides a comparison to other similar candidates. Pay attention to the word similar candidates. The question is, where do they take this, this information from? And I read somewhere that they are comparing you to the database they already have. Okay, this led me to, be, to think, you know, Americans are not evenly divided in companies. We know one thing, if you are a black woman, you'll be in a minority in a, at a company. So they are comparing you to this select group. So in my head, I said, something is not 100% right. I kind of don't like it, that's my own opinion. I don't think people ask my opinion, but this is my opinion. I don't know how you think about this. Okay, so here comes a big, big, big question. What can the applicants do to improve their chances? That's where I wanted to get. First of all, maintain eye contact. It's so easy for me to tell you, it's so difficult for you to do this. I work with people almost daily. And I can tell you the number one comment they hear from me is, Please make an attempt to look at me. Actually, thinking about it, I have a sign here that I'm showing them. I don't know, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see? Uh, Marty, I see you on my screen. Can you see this sign? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, you know, when people, when I work with my clients, sometimes I show them this. Look at it's so difficult. It's so difficult to look at the camera and maintain eye contact. Uh, my background, of course, is not psychology, but there is something that I see it all the time. I am asking them an interview question and their eye immediately goes elsewhere. That's not very good. You want to maintain eye contact. And I'm telling you, this is very difficult. And I'm telling you, you can improve by being aware of it and thinking about it and practicing. That's the only way you can improve. Probably you looking aside when you're being asked a difficult question is a habit that you had from the time that you were a little child. Speak at the comfortable rate. It is a known thing when you are under pressure, you speak faster. It's a known thing. Perhaps because you just want to get out under the pressure. So the point is, do not speak faster than normal because you'll be evaluated on that. Avoid the use of filler words. These are some. Uh, you know, gotcha, right? Mm, like, 
we all use those words, avoid doing, using it because they are taking points away by you using this too many times. You see? Laurie, you want to say something? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I forgot. I thought I was. OK. Use an online interview practice software called Interview Focus uh, to practice and get instant written feedback for a nominal fee of, four, of about $45. This is what I, I did. And I want to show you, I, I received, as soon as I was done with this, I received several pages. Of course, you, you cannot see this. I will review it with you. Uh, well, the overall, the overall mock interview score that I did was 61%. And 61% is just about above average because 41 to 60 is average, 61 to 80 is above average. So I just squeezed in to be above average. And I was evaluated on my eye contact. In other words, was I able to look at the camera? And I got a 96 percentile. I was also evaluated on my head engagement. In other words, did I move my head properly? And I received the 65% score on that. My speaking rate was 60%. And I can tell you, I spoke 127 words per minute. And that puts me exactly on the average. 120 to 139 is average. And then on filler words, I got 7%. And I can tell you, I use the filler words, for example, the word so, S-O, I used it nine times, like seven times, right, four times, actually three times, you know, once, okay, once. So again, they are evaluating you on these filler words. Uh, the next thing I was evaluated on smile, I'm very proud to say I got 100%. I'm telling you this is so difficult, like Ken said a little earlier. Uh, but I was aware that they will evaluate me if I'm able to smile. And I got 100% on that, which was good. And then I was evaluated on my tone of voice. And let me open that page. So when it comes to tone of voice, they evaluated me on emotions. And they evaluated me on language style. On emotions, they evaluated on anger, joy, fear, sadness, and disgust. And I don't know if you can see it, but I, I received the chart here. Probably you cannot see it. It's too small. Oh, excuse me, Alex, a couple of questions that came up. Is it $45 for one session, first of all? Uh, yes. Okay. The other thing is, does accent... Does an accent negatively affect your score? Uh, bear with me for a second, and I'll okay. answer that. The, okay. the, the, the language style, the language style, I was evaluated on analytical, tentative, and confident. Did you sound confident? And again, I received, I have a chart. Again, if you do this, you get this printout. Now, I have no facts and evidence that I was uh, taken points away because of my accent. I don't know. I, I, I suspect there is an element there. Uh, I've been living in the United States for 50 years, so I, I always say uh, I don't speak English. I just imitate the Americans. That's my standard joke. Uh, yeah. But uh, look, uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, if you have, I work with people and I admit, I work with an individual that came from Brazil. It was utterly difficult to understand. Very intelligent guy, by the way, but I just couldn't understand what he was saying. I work with people from China, from India, from other countries. Some of them have a very, very, very strong accent. They speak good English. They're very educated, very smart people. But the verbal communication is so difficult to understand. 
I am sure that somewhere along the line, this is taken into consideration. I can tell you now that we are talking about this. When my wife and I came to United States, my wife had a stronger accent than I had. And she took some, she went to a speech therapist for a few times to improve her English accent or reduce the foreign accent. Let, let's put it that way. Uh, can I move on, Ken? Sure. Yep. Yes. Now, smile, smile a lot. I want to tell you, a smile is a universal body language communication. I don't care if you're in Antarctica or Nepal or Princeton, New Jersey, it doesn't matter. A smile means exactly the same thing. It's nice to be with you. I like it, it's pleasant. So make an attempt to smile and you know what? This is the first thing that goes. When you are under pressure, the first thing that you will not do is smile. But remember, you are evaluated on that. So <laughs> you need to practice, you need to practice, you need to be aware that not only you need to give a good answer, but at the same time, you need to smile. I'm telling you, this is difficult. Your tone of voice will be analyzed for anger, joy, fear, sadness, and disgust. Think about it. The artificial intelligence is able to differentiate that. And again, I want, I, it tells me here that, uh, for example, question, I had 12 questions, by the way, and question number four, uh, I was rated as very, very highly analytical. Uh, question number seven, I was high on tentative. And question number eight and question number 12, I was very highly rated on confidence. So again, all this is taken into consideration. And again, this is what I just said. Uh, analytical tentative confident. So here I want to give you a few tips how to improve. Make sure that your face is properly lit with no shades. Uh, the way you see me here, I have three lights here in my office because I have a window to my right and sometimes now it's morning, so there's plenty of light. But if I turn the lights off, this side is lit and this side is, is dark. So I want to make sure I'm properly lit and there are no shades. Elevate the camera to eye level. Let me show you some. I'm going to put my finger on my camera. You see, I elevated my laptop. So when you see me, it seems like I'm looking at you. If I were to take my laptop and put it on my desk, I would bend down. That's not the best view of me. Let's put it that way. Now, position the camera to show upper body in order to mimic what the other, what the interviewer would see if you were sitting across the desk. You can see me here for my belly button up and you can see my upper body. What? Below this is the desk. I work with people and sometimes all I see, all I see is their head. Take advantage of your upper body because you see, I can use my hands, I can move, I can turn. This is natural. If I were to be in your office, I would use my hands, I would lean forward, I would move back. Because if I'm just stuck like this, I have an expression for this. It's a sculpture with moving lips. One of the suggestions I tell my clients, don't sit at the desk, don't put your elbow on the desk. Because if you do that, basically you lock your shoulder. Don't, if I do this, the only thing I can move is my head. So I'm saying away perhaps about a foot 
away from my desk. This way I can move, this way I can lean forward, this way, this way I can express my thoughts physically by moving closer, smiling. It gives you the freedom. Use good quality earbuds to control the quality of the sound. You see, I'm, I'm using earbuds because this way, if I move away or if I come close, the sound of my voice is even because, because it is wired. Uh, some computers have outstanding, mi outstanding microphones. Some computers have not so good microphones. Don't allow this to happen to you. What happens if the interviewer cannot hear you clearly and not, cannot comprehend what you say because of the quality of the sound? I can guarantee you, nobody in America will say, what, what did you say? Say it again. They will not do this three, four times. So it's up to you to have good quality sound. Develop answers to common interview questions. I think I said the obvious here. What do you think the interview is all about? It's about common interview questions. Uh, I, will, I will do this to you as I've done it before when I made this presentation. I have a set of three pages of common interview questions. Actually, I can show it to you. I'm more than happy to send it to you. This is what I do. This is what I use daily with my clients. It's right here. I, I have three pages. I'm more than happy to send it to you. Uh, and here's my sense of humor that I used it in the past and it worked. When you, please, you have to write to me. I will give you my email address. To get this, you have to write to me and don't say, hi, Alex, please send me the common interview question. Say, dear Alex. If you say, dear Alex, I do it much, much faster. Okay. That's my sense of humor. Okay. So again, uh, there are questions. Tell me about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Why are you interested in this position? Again, I'm more than happy to send it to you. It's on my desktop. As soon as I receive your request, I attach the file and you have it. Develop answers to behavioral interview questions. And again, on page two on this document, on page two here, I will read this to you. It says behavior and situational interview questions. Uh, many companies, especially pharma companies, absolutely love this. Tell me about the time when. Uh, what has been your biggest? Uh, uh, give me an example where. And so these are behavior-based behavior questions. You need to be ready with your stories to answer these type of questions. I'm more than happy to send this to you. Learn in advance as much as possible about the company. You, you want to show the interviewer that you spent a lot of time learning about, about them. And I'm happy to send you, I have another document and I'm more than happy to send it to you. It says interview preparation, how to research the company. Here are the questions. Here is where you need to put the answers. Alex, we have some the, questions now. Can I just, can I chime in with some questions? Sorry? Can I chime in with a couple of questions that people have asked? Yes, yes, okay. please. Um, what do you see on the screen as an interviewer? How do you know if it's a bot or a human? And I guess this is the question. If, if I'm on the other side as a hiring manager and I pre-tape my questions to you, I mean, is that considered a bot or is it, is it, is, is it something else? Okay, let me see if I understand. The question is, how do you know if on your screen it's a live person or, or, or a, a bot? bot? Right. Okay. I mean, that, 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 that's very easy. I mean, it will take you one tenth of one second to come to that conclusion. Uh, yeah, it's very, very it, it, it looks artificial. They try to make it natural, but it looks artificial. There's no doubt about it. Uh, now, the question had another part. 
Ken, you, you, the question had another part. Right, Can I? Says, go ahead. That's how it. Will you know, how will you know if it's a bot or a human? How will the bot typically kick off um, the interview? Is there like a... a Very easy. Work? Hi, can you tell me about yourself? <laughs> That's it. Okay. And then any idea if the API tech is used across levels of experience or limited to roles requiring certain experience like manager level? Um, is this a standard across all different uh, levels? Well, that's correct. Uh, the questions are standard questions. It's not that they have special questions for administrative assistants and special questions for manager and special questions for managing directors and so forth. They have a set of questions. Remember, the purpose of this is to eliminate you. This is not a test on your skills. This is a test on your soft skills, whether you appear the way they want it, whether you appear that you fit culturally, mm -hmm. whether you appear that you will be collaborating. These are all soft skills. Great, thanks. Can, can, I, can I move on? Yes, keep going. Okay, yeah. okay. so I want, to, I want to finish it. I'm going to send this to you. Here are some questions how to if, how to learn about the company and the questions that are listed here is you need to be familiar with the company's history, their people, their value, culture, competitors, products, services, direction of the company and the interview. So there are lots of questions that you need to find answers to. These are the questions you write your answers here. And I always tell people, read this document three times before the interview. You can sprinkle here and there the information that you learned about them. They will be very impressed with that. Develop answer to potential questions based on the job description. Again, I'm saying here the obvious. What do you think the interview is going to be about? Question. The answer is, it's about the job description. I mean, of course. So you need to know that the job description in details. Be ready to answer any and all questions that you can get from the job description, that at the minimum. And you need to have the answers to that. Don't act like you're so surprised that they ask you something that was bullet number two on their job description. Practice with someone experienced who can give you instant feedback. This is the biggest value and the biggest benefit, but by working with someone who is competent and can give you instant feedback. And I'll tell you why. The example that, that I typically give out is a phone conversation I had probably a year ago. An individual called me and said the following. Hi, Alex, I got your name from LinkedIn. Alex, can you help me? I live in Chicago. I have a PhD. I, for the last 20 years, I've been working in pharma. Alex, I had six interviews and I never received an offer. Alex, can you tell me what's the problem? Of course, I'm not able to give an answer to this individual, but this is what I said. I don't know you, of course I don't, but here is my thinking. You went to the first interview and you did something that the interviewer did not like, and they didn't extend you a second chance. You went to the second interview with another company, probably you did the same thing, the same mistake, if I may say, that you did the first time. You didn't get the job. And this went on six times. The best thing that you can do is get someone that can help you, give you honest feedback, so at least you have a chance to fix it. Otherwise, you just perpetuate a mistake that you have done many, many times, and that is the reason they're not extending you the offer. Now, of course, this is what I do. 
please don't take this as a solicitation for your business. Absolutely not. Go to somebody, a family member, go to a friend, go to someone that is competent enough to interview you and give you feedback. You need to hear what the other person is telling you as a suggestion for improvement. Focus on the other person, not on your webcam. Now, I don't know if you see me right now on your screen. I don't know if you see me looking at you or looking elsewhere. Right now, I'm looking at the screen in front of me. And now I'm, now I'm looking at the camera. I'm sure you see the difference. I admit to you, I cannot interview just looking at the camera. It's impossible, I cannot do it. So I need to look at you as a reaction to gauge, to judge if you like my answer or you don't like my answer. But I hope that my eye is close enough to the camera so you don't perceive me like looking totally at a different angle. Artificial intelligence detects facial expression. I show you example, anger, fear, joy. And artificial intelligence is very good about this because they compare your facial expression to hundreds and thousands of others. It's very hard to fake it. So you need to learn like an actor, you need to learn how to appear happy. Uh, use LinkedIn learning to practice interview answers. Now, I, I tested this and I don't know how I got on because I know that you need to have LinkedIn premium and I don't. I think I got through it through another company. Honestly, I don't know how I got in, but I tested it and I liked it. And in conclusion, Okay, here's then. Most hiring decisions are still made during the live interview. That's a fact, that's a fact. So here is my contact information. I leave it up a little bit. Now we still have a few more minutes. Please ask any of your questions. Thank you very much, Alex. I actually also have asked people if they wanted to put their LinkedIn URLs in the chat because I'm going to save the chat and we'll forward it to them. Um, does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask what they, or experiences they'd like to share? Well, I, I just want to make a comment. Uh, I see on my screen my buddy from Atlanta, Al Smith. Not yes. only that I like him, but do you notice the color of the shirt that he has? I, I, I like that. And, you know, we, we didn't coordinate the colors, by the way. I didn't talk to Al for quite a while, but he's a smart guy and he's, wear, he's wearing the right color. Good. Al, so nice to see you. Good to see you too, Alex. Alex, it's Thank Joey Himmelfarb. I have a question for you. Please. What do you think is the future? Is this the way that is uh, uh, 30 years from now? Are we only going to be talking to bots and is it going to be AI interviewing you for jobs? Well, well he, first of all, I cannot think 30 years out, but I can tell you in the immediate future and progressively, there will be more and more and more. You saw my slide that said a third of Fortune 500 are already using it. More and more and more companies will need to use this. You know why? They cannot drink from a fire hose. The applicants are applying left and right every day. They have to find some filter. They have to find some ways to, to filter out some people. Now, taking it, let's say, take it one, two, three years out. People will have to learn how to play the game. This is a new game in town. People need to learn how to interview A and how to interview when there's no human there. It's a bot. You have no choice. And if you refuse to learn how to interview with a bot, you will be pushed back. 
My advice is practice it. Thanks. Good advice. Good. Thank you, Joy. One other question, just which which I talked a little about. What happens if there's a technical issue in the middle of this? Let's say uh, your internet goes down, power outage, whatever it is. I mean, it's one thing if you're talking to someone, you have a plan in advance, but how do you handle that with a bot? All of a sudden, you're just, you know, you lose the connections or anything you can do? I would say with difficulty and embarrassingly. This is terrible. This is terrible. It's an important thing. You have an interview. There is a technical glitch. <laughs> I think you can go back to the company and ask to be interviewed again. I don't know what the answer is. It's highly, highly unpleasant. No, I agree. And it's something that does come up. And it's, yeah, I agree. Alex, I also have a question. Is there, are there generational considerations? I know my students in college, they don't even want to talk on the phone. So I'm guessing their ability to interact on an interview in a video interview at ABI might be challenging and nothing against older generations because I'm part of it, but we are also a little more reluctant often. So is that going to be taken into account, I wonder, as interviews are conducted? And I don't know if it came through in your evaluation at all as that part of the factors. Excellent question, Scott. I want to tell you, there is a new game in town. It's called AVI. You need to learn the game. I mean, you know, you remember who is a decision maker, not you, it's them. And if they say for us to, to talk to you further and have an in-person interview, uh, even via video, not in person in the office, you have to go to step one. If you fail step one, there's no step two. There's no way, there's no way. You just need to learn how to play this game. Similarly, if you remember two, three, four years ago, when the first time I heard the acronym ATS, Applicant Tracking System, I said, what the hell is that? Now, what do I need to do now? And slowly, slowly, and I gave in, I needed to learn what it is and how to use correctly the right words in order to move on. Got it, thank you, Alex. So it's practice, 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 and adapt. <laughs> I'm not originally saying practice, 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 but that's, that's the reality. <clears throat> Hi, um, Alex, I have a question. I did the interview with this, uh, we had a live interview with that recruiter and he was not facing me with the camera. He was fixing his hair and talking to me. Is that a pulpit? <laughs> that, Susan, that's a, that's a whole discussion. That's a whole discussion. Uh, I, I will share you a little bit. I remember many years ago, I had an interview. That was many years ago. I had an interview. And during the interview, the gentleman leaned under his desk. He pulled out the box and he started shining his shoes. <laughs> how do you feel that, how do you think I felt? Nothing. You don't want to start fixing your hair. All this is recorded and they will judge you based on this. I always suggest to people, you know, do, don't touch anything above this line. Mm -hmm. This is a very common thing if you study about body language. Many people do this. Oh, women fix their hair three times a minute. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, they just play with their hair. Oh, men fix their tie. <laughs> no, the, in the body language world, this is called appeasement. Mm -hmm. Appeasement. The body is under tension. To pacify the body, people develop various habits. Don't touch anything above here during the interview, because they know this. And this is very, very common. 
I challenge you from here on, when you see people make a presentation, just watch how often they touch their face. It happens all the time. It's called appeasement. The body is under tension. The body needs to be calming down. Thanks, Alex. My pleasure. Ken, any other questions? Um, I don't see any in the chat. Anyone else have any questions they want to add or anything else they'd like to but, chime in with? Ken, Ken, I want to say something. I always enjoy when people have questions, but I equally enjoy when people don't have questions. You know why? why? When they don't have questions, I give a perfect presentation. They have all the answers, so they don't need to ask any questions. Or they may have them later on. You just never know. No, I said they're joking. I know, I know, Alex. <laughs> we know each other pretty well. And I know. All right. So I want to thank everyone for coming today. I actually have recorded this. Um, first of all, the final question: How do you graciously end an interview? I had one where the recruiter was just a mess. We'll end with that. Uh, are you talking about an interview? Interview or uh, um, a, an interview with a bot? Andrea, why don't you unmute yourself and ask? Because I'm not really sure which one you're referring to. Hi, Alex. Um, not with a bot, um, but a Zoom call. And the interview where the recruiter was just, I, she had Wilma Flintstone hair. She was wearing a sleeveless muumuu. She was in her bedroom with people on the bed. It was like I was back. If I was a family member, this would be okay. But this was for a job. So, you know, you, you're in the situation of where you're wanting a job and you're interviewing with the person and they're just so inappropriate. I mean, do you go through with the interview? Do you just say, maybe we should talk at a later time? And uh, I want to tell you, this is such a difficult question because they, they behave and they exhibit less than professional behavior but you are the victim and unfortunately they are the decision maker. It's very sad, but that's reality. I, I, don't, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm sorry you had to go through this. It's so unpleasant, so unpleasant, so unprofessional. I, I agree. I think it's, it's a thing too, for people to note that if you walk into an interview and the place is a mess or there's no receptionist or you've gotten incredibly bad decisions, yeah. that, but, but how do you end it? I mean, do you just walk out the door? Do you, but, that, who knows? Andrea, you don't end the interview, they end it, and I'll tell you how. So Andrea, do you have any question for me? This is typically the, the, the hint. This is the end, we are done. Any quick questions and I'm moving on to my next task. They will end the interview. You shouldn't worry about it. Thank you. I would also sure. say though that you are actually interviewing them. You know, it is a two-way street. Interviews are conversations. So ask yourself, would you want to work for the company or for the person that's there? You know, I think that, that yeah. gets, kind of gets lost a lot. Yeah. And Alex. Right, so, go ahead, Al. Uh, I personally would suggest uh, using a bad interview situation as interview practice. <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. If, uh, if more, nothing else, more... it's providing a great story to tell other people <laughs> and a laugh. I mean, the woman was just a total disheveled mess. Alex, and it's funny because, you know, we sit there and we prep and we get dressed and we have our list of questions and have all our paperwork and to have someone like that was was so out of the box for me. Alex, I have a question for you. Um, sure. Besides the interview focus um, website that you went to, were there any other uh, services that you considered for the online practice software? Uh I know there are between half a dozen to a dozen. This is the one that I'm familiar. I tested it. I didn't spend you know, another half a day to research and test it and so forth. I can guarantee you there are competitors. 
Don, uh, Don, Dr. Scott actually put something in the chat, which I saved. I don't know if you want to mention it now, too. Oh, sure. Thank you. Sure. Uh, there is a five-day LinkedIn challenge coming up mid-November. Um, it's geared towards career seekers, job seekers. Uh, it's, it's a little bit, it's not just about your about section and your tagline and your picture and your banner, but it gives some additional insights in about 10, 15 minutes a day. So if you're interested, you're welcome to take a look, uh, get, a, get, get a feel. It is no charge. It's easy access. Uh, there is a Facebook group and we have discussions about whether to use Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups. And Facebook is the more social of the platform. A lot of uh, LinkedIn gurus seem to be using Facebook too, which makes sense. So if there's anybody that has an interest or a need, Kenneth, thank you for the opportunity to be here and share that. Sure. But, sure. Uh, it's, it's, it's just an opportunity to, for all of us to learn, share, and grow together. All right. So I'm going to save the chat and also save the recording. I will send the link. Um, I'll post it in the event that I did on LinkedIn and also in the meetup group. I want to thank you, Alex, very, very much for being here today. Um, it was my pleasure. It was my much pleasure. Much appreciated. And thank you all for attending. Have a great day, everyone. And I hope to see you all soon and stay safe.